All right, hello everybody. Welcome back for our first spring lions lecture, which could not be stopped by the ice storm. Um, so I'm very grateful to uh, our presenters today for adjusting um, and finding another date for us to be able to listen to their wonderful presentation. Uh, as a reminder, our Lions Lecture is a joint venture between First Year Track, the College of Innovation and Design, and our graduate school. Um, and we hope that this event will bring you some entertainment and um, some education as our distinguished individuals take the stage and give us their presentation. Tonight we have Dr. Robert Rodriguez and graduate student Nazmush Munya. Uh, Dr. Oldham, who was originally scheduled tonight, will be unable to join us, but we are looking forward to having him present at a future Lions Lecture event. Um, as per usual, our presenters will speak for 20 minutes, and then after their presentation, we will open the floor for Q&A, so if you have any questions. Uh, and now I would like to invite Dr. VR to the mic to say a few words to introduce our speakers. Does this? No, it doesn't. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? You can't hear me now? It doesn't sound like you can hear me now. You can't really hear me now. How about, how about now? Can you hear me now? All right. Hey, handheld is the way to go. All right. Thank you for joining me. I send apologies uh, and condolences. Dr. Schrader could not be here tonight. Um, she won't be here for the next one either, but she will make it for one of these this semester. So I send condolences. And on behalf of Dr. Oldham, um, we will schedule him in at a repeat performance sometime later in the semester. Uh, we also apologize that we don't have alcohol available for sale. We do have the intoxicating aroma of bread. So we hope that that will be a good dupe for, to for tonight. Um, thank you. We are using the nursing atrium space for the first time, kind of um, prototyping that as a potential Lions lecture space get a feel for that. Normally we are in the Student Center. I anticipate we'll, we will be back in the Student Center for our March Lions Lecture. So um, I also want to say hats off to those of you that are frequent attendees of the Lions Lecture. Katrina Watkins, I don't think you've missed one yet. So kudos to you, Dr. Bob Williams. Doctors Klipchek are here in force tonight. Tracy Stewart, I see you. Bob Williams. Ray Green is joining us tonight. So thank you. Those of you that are new, we hope that you are frequent attendees in the future. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce our speakers for tonight. Dr. Robert Rodriguez is an Associate Professor of Political Science. He has taught at a and Commerce since 2010, and one of his specialty areas examines the intersection between politics and sports. This is a first time for the Lions Lecture that we have a duo, duo presentation from two different colleges, so bonus points for that. He is joined by Ms. Nazmush Munia, a graduate student in the College of Business who is also from Bangladesh. Tonight, they will be discussing how port sports have a unique ability to unify people of vastly different backgrounds. One of the most fascinating storylines from the 2022 FIFA World Cup was the emergence and recognition of soccer fans in Bangladesh fervently supporting the Argentine national soccer team throughout the tournament. This presentation briefly traces the history of political relations, the emergence of support for the Argentine national soccer team, and the subsequent social media groups that were formed during the 2020 FIFA World Cup. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Robert Rodriguez and graduate student Nazmush Munia to the stage with their talk the Argentine-Bangladeshi love affair at the 2022 FIFA World Cup. Thank you so much for that kind introduction. Um, now, everything that Dr. VR mentioned is, is, of course, true, but there's one little detail that she left out that's relevant for this presentation. And that is that I am a citizen of both the United States and Argentina. And so winning the World Cup in December, just a couple months back, uh, is a really, really big deal. And this, as the introduction mentioned, um, is a story that came about that was completely unexpected. Because all of a sudden, Argentinians found out, discovered, if you will, in quotations, 
that there's this whole other country on the other side of the world that fervently supports the national soccer team as if they were Argentinians themselves. And so this is indeed this story about how through sport, uh, countries that are seemingly completely different in a world apart can indeed uh, come together. And so with that, I want to uh, pass the microphone on to our graduate student from the School of Business, as was mentioned, um, which is relevant, of course, that she is from Bangladesh. So, thanks, thanks, thank you, Mr. Roberts. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Nazmu Shahada Tawmunia. I'm from Bangladesh, and currently, I'm a master's student in supply chain management and Texas and commerce. Uh, so, you know that the discussion topic today is the Argentine and Bangladesh love fest. So, the story of today is. It shows that love knows no boundaries. Actually, it can be global. So um, here I'm going to show you that actually Argentina and Bangladesh are not neighbor countries also. In fact, they are around more than 70,000 kilometers far from each other. Bangladesh is a small country in South Asia. Dhaka is the capital of Bangladesh. And our neighboring countries are India, Myanmar, China, Bhutan. So, I want to tell you a, some, a few story of Bangladesh. In 1971, after a nine months long liberation war, we got our independence. So, we ca you can tell that Bangladesh is only a 52-year-old young country. And we, the Bangladeshi people, are mostly emotional. We are the only nation in the world who actually sacrifices their lives for their mother tongue. And that's why the 21st February has been worldwide recognized as International Mother Language Day. Uh, our economy mostly depends on our energy sectors and agriculture. We are the second biggest ready-made garment exporter in the world. And in this RNG sector, most of the employees are women. Bangladesh is also regarded as the role model for women empowerment and women involvement in economy among developing countries. <laughs> so you can see this picture and you can imagine that Bangladesh is mostly densely populated country. And uh, the, here I am actually showing a picture from an occasion. You can see a fully loaded train with lots of people and someone holding our national flag. So Bangladeshi people, we are as emotional as passionate. We are passionate of our history, culture, and sports. In Bangladesh, there is a saying that we celebrate 13 festivals in 12 months. We celebrate nationally different religious festivals of different religions. So here I'm also showing you some uh, celebrations picture from Bangladesh. So uh, here I want to uh, show you some glints of our uh, sports. Though Bangladeshi people are madly in love with soccer and madly in love with Argentina and Messi, I'm wearing the jersey of Messi. So, uh, but we are not actually that much good at in soccer. And in fact, uh, the fun part is in this 2022, our FIFA rank was 192. But still, we love soccer, we love Argentina, and mostly the Messi. So uh, here I want to show you a glance of our uh, national game, and that is called Hadutu. <laughs> And uh, this is a traditional game, it's called Maukabite. It's a kind of uh, boat race. And I think you all know it's a cricket. So Bangladesh people are mostly crazy for cricket. And cricket is very popular in our country and our national team is doing very well. And most of our national players are got recognized as a worldwide. So you can see that like, the, this is a uh, this is a video from our World Cup. In this game, Bangladesh actually won against Pakistan, and you can see the audience came into the field to celebrate this joy, this victory.
So to take a little step back into uh, what for me was the most glorious month of sports uh, that I've had in quite some time. Um, this is the structure of the World Cup. Uh, it began right after my 50th birthday. And of course, that morning I woke up early to see Argentina lose two to one to Saudi Arabia. And, um, and to say I was devastated is, is an understatement. But then things turned around from there. And then I have all the results listed, the way that uh, the cup is structured. Uh, Argentina began on a roll. Uh, next game, which was at that point a must win, a 2-0 uh, victory over Mexico that my Mexican students have not uh, forgiven me for. And we've had uh, quite a few discussions about that. From there, it went on to uh, Poland, then it went into the knockout phase. And so this is just the sporting aspect of what was going on. But importantly, just a few days into the tournament, I came across this. Now this is a media source from Argentina. It's called Info Bay. And it's a news article that was published just a few days after the World Cup began. And it was showing a picture from Bangladesh of thousands of supporters of the Argentinian team wearing Argentine national team jersey. Uh, and of course it begged the question, why? Um, as far as I knew, there wasn't any particular tie between Argentina and Bangladesh. And all of a sudden, when you see thousands of people wearing the national team jersey and in support, um, it let off the, the bulbs in my mind to wonder and ask, how is this possible? Why is this happening? And so the article here, of course, it's in the original Spanish. It says, the celebrations and the craziness in Bangladesh for the Argentine triumph in the World Cup Qatar 2022. Why are they fanatics for the Albi Celeste? Albi Celeste is a nickname for the, for the national soccer team. In addition to the news articles, there also were a number of images. Now these images that you see here on the screen are not from Buenos Aires. These are from Dhaka, from the capital of Bangladesh or elsewhere in the country. You see long, Argentine flags paraded in the streets and flown through the air. You see people wearing the national soccer team jersey and watching the games. This had a profound impact in Argentina because with today's world and the internet and media, um, all of a sudden on Argentine news channels and social media, these images began to emerge. And so all of a sudden, in the center, for example, that's a news broadcast from Bangladesh where you see that the broadcaster is wearing the same soccer jersey that Nazmush is wearing right here today. And this was during the broadcast. And so they actually showed the broadcast in the Argentine media. Um, and that underscored the relevance that this seemed to be happening, having in uh, the country so far away. It got to the point where the fervor reached the Argentinian coach during the World Cup and during the press conference uh, just before or after one of the matches, he was asked the question, are you aware that Bangladesh is supporting Argentina? And here you see his response. It makes us proud that the people in Bangladesh are supporting Argentina like this. For years, the national team has transmitted a madness throughout the world because we had Diego, a reference to Maradona, the, who in the 1980s was considered the greatest player in the world. Um, now we have Leo, a reference to Messi, who today is considered to be the same. And thanks to the people of Bangladesh. That led to reciprocation. And these images are from Argentina, not from Dhaka, but rather from Buenos Aires, where you see the green and red black flag of Bangladesh. Uh, paraded through the streets, um, at the celebrations, right alongside the Argentinian flag, and then you see even one person holding uh, a jersey similar to the one that I'm wearing, which is for support of the Bangladesh national cricket team, a sport that in Argentina is not a sport that is commonly uh, played or that they've had any measure of success at. So in the end, you already know the result. Argentina ends up winning the World Cup for the third time, and between four and five million people take to the streets of Buenos Aires. 
Four to five million people in Buenos Aires is 10% of the country's population. It was that significant. And actually, I've owned my family, but arrived two days after this image that you're seeing uh, right here. Uh, so uh, throughout this World Cup, Bangladeshi people and Bangladeshi media was supporting Argentina. Bangladeshi media was always covered all the sports news related to Argentina. Uh, here I'm showing a few of our national papers who has been uh, published the victory news of Argentina in the front page. All these headlines in the front page was praises of Argentina and Messi. So it's a story of 16 years. In every movie, we see that at the end of the movie, the hero wins. But in this movie, the hero is trying for 16 years to achieve that trophy without success. But this time, this time, the hero won. And after this winning, people went out for a rally with Argentina flag. you can see that how big is this flag this flag is not Bangladeshi flag this flag is Argentina Argentina's flag and it is as big as Bangladeshi people has love for Argentina so I also want to show you some craziness for Argentina so it was during the World Cup match so all of the people were watching the game together and after the victory how they celebrated so it is also saying that the champion federation of Argentina is also giving their thanks towards Bangladeshi people and Bangladeshi government. So during this World Cup, more than 100 Facebook pages has been formed related to this fandom, fandom for Argentina. Uh, so not through the pages only, people or Argentine uh, jersey by their own selves and also posted their uh, feelings and emotions in the Facebook. And uh, the most uh, popular, most circulated newspaper in Bangladesh, Prothom Alo, has also published the news in their online version. So all of this is very nice. It's warm, it's fuzzy, it's beautiful, but does it matter? And that's where we get into the historical and the political. So how did this relationship even begin in the first place? And for that, you have to take a step back to Bangladesh's independence, which Nazmush mentioned at the outset of this talk. Argentina was one of the first countries in the world to recognize Bangladesh as an independent state. And this was, as you can see here, um, there's a couple of historical documents that I was able to find where this relationship politically and historically emerges. Um, the person who was in office in the, in the presidency was the de facto president. He was part of a military dictatorship at that time. Alejandro Lanuse was his name. Um, he is the one who formally recognized Bangladesh. But soon thereafter, there was a transition to democracy in Argentina, and Juan Peron, who has had an oversized influence in Argentine politics before and since, it emerged as, for the third time in history, as the president of Argentina. And it was he who actually established the first embassy of Argentina in Bangladesh. That's the middle article that you see there. It was by decree, and that's what was published in the newspaper media accounts. Now, the embassy itself would only last for a few years. Uh, Peron himself would die the following year. Um, a military coup came back in Argentina and took over the controls of the executive branch, uh, and they ended up closing the embassy in uh, 1978. 
But this is how the political relationship began. That then begs the question, what about then this fandom or, or the sporting relationship? And all of the uh, individuals interviewed uh, by Argentine media in Bangladesh point to Diego Manuel and the 1986 World Cup. So it was during that World Cup, which was just a few years after the Falkland Islands, Malvinas war that took place in 1982, that Argentina and England met in a quarterfinal match at the World Cup. And in that game, those of you who may remember it, know that it was historic for a number of reasons. The first was what's depicted here on the screen, the so-called hand of God goal, where Diego Maradona punched a goal, uh, the soccer ball into the net, scoring uh, without the referee realizing that this was a handball and not a header. From 5-3 Maradona over 6-1 uh, Peter Shilton, the uh, goalkeeper. Um, the second goal is widely considered to be the greatest goal in World Cup history. He's, Maradona started in his own side of the field and dribbled past 6-7 uh, Englishmen to score the goal. So that victory was not just in the sporting realm, but also had an oversized significance because it was in the aftermath of the Falcons War, and to show that at least in that round, for this moment, Argentina was superior to those that had won the war a few years earlier. So the sports editor of a major Bangladeshi newspaper was interviewed and asked, how did this relationship begin? And he was the one who explained that it's in the original Spanish, that it has to do with that game between Argentina and England. And that he, he says, this is the Bangladeshi um, sports editor that says, Maradona hypnotized the Bangladeshis with his ability like no one had done in the past. The hand of God also uh, provoked a, fero a ferocious debate because of the nature of the goal. Um, but in the end, it was in the aftermath of the Falkland Island War, and in the end, uh, the public in Bangladesh ended up supporting Completely. Another sports writer from uh, Protomalo, which uh, is in, was in one of the social media posts that Asmus showed earlier, um, it says that the support for the Argentine team has an anti-colonial characteristic. And that um, David Beckham, for example, was never popular there, but Maradona was. Why? Because the Bangladesh, uh, Maradona was crazy and the Bangladeshi people love crazy people. <laughs> Thank you. So, the aftermath. What happens politically after the World Cup is over? Well, this is probably the most significant part of the story. Because it is thanks to this mutual recognition, this mutual support and love from two countries that are seemingly having nothing in common, different languages, religions, cultures, etc., that the leader of Bangladesh, Sheikh Hasina, uh, sends a letter to Alberto Fernandez, the president of Argentina, and he says there uh, his congratulations for uh, Argentina and congratulations from his own uh, side as well. Um, but then he goes on to say, um, this unprecedented love and affection between our two peoples have paved the way for solid bilateral relations. To that end, I hope to further consolidate our relations by opening missions in each other's capitals in the coming days. The response from the Argentine president, which you see there in the center in the original Spanish. Thank you, Sheikh Hasina, and the entire population of Bangladesh. The unity and uh, mutual affection that we have seen in the last few weeks has become inexplicable. And today here, in, in Buenos Aires, today here, both flags fly high. Let's um, make our connections more profound. And indeed, that is what would go on to happen. The foreign minister of Argentina, Antonio Cafiero, uh, goes and meets with his counterpart uh, from Bangladesh to formally reestablish embassy, an embassy of Argentina in Dhaka uh, in, the coming, uh, in the coming months. So, in sum, 
What we uh, have learned by going through and finding out the background of this story um, is that on the one hand, as I tell my students oftentimes, you can learn a lot about the world just by watching soccer. That's, that's kind of point number one. Um, but more than that is what Nazlin was saying at the very beginning, that this care, this affection, this love knows no boundaries. And you can see very vividly in this case that uh, once one country takes a step forward, the other reciprocates. And that in itself is, is perhaps the, the, the biggest overarching lesson here, that sometimes we can um, not necessarily set aside, but look past perhaps our differences to come together and come together not only in the cultural way, but also in meaningful political ways as well. And so with that, uh, we'll leave you and uh, open it up for questions. Thank you. We can connect here. Yeah. Yes. So I believe the question was, is there something special about these two countries specifically that made this kind of connection happen more organically than other countries? Is that a good summary? Yeah. Might it be replicated elsewhere? Is it just something about these two nations that caused it to happen? Okay. So is there a way to replicate this with other countries? Well, I think on, uh, on one level, it's sort of soccer diplomacy, right? Um, but it was something that was not manufactured, and I think that's the critical part. In this context, it was something that was organic and natural. It's just that in Argentina, people were not aware that this actually existed. But with today's technology, even though it's existed apparently since 1986, but with today's technology, we're able to see it vividly. And they're able to see it vividly because not only did the images from Bangladesh reach Buenos Aires, the images from Buenos Aires also reached Bangladesh. And, um, and so con in contextually, that was a significant part of this, just to be able to see this. And then also, there's a part that we didn't get too far into with respect to social media. The, you may not have noticed, but on the screen with the social media shots, um, those groups had 400,000, 500,000, 600,000 members. Uh, we're talking about millions of people that began to connect on social media as well from both sides. And I became a part of some of these um, groups just to see the kind of commentary that was emerging. And, um, and it was something that was fascinating to see. Uh, that's why from the, from the very beginning when I found that, um, when I saw that initial news report, I knew I had to try to find someone from Bangladesh at this university. Uh, and fortunately, I was able to find uh, Nazmush, if you want to. Yeah. So yeah, as uh, Robert, uh, Professor Robert said, actually this love is totally organic and natural because this love just not formed in this last World Cup. Since my childhood, I'm just seeing this kind of love for Argentina. So yeah, this is a true love for Argentina and Messi. Somebody back here. Mine's not really a question because I have to confess I am a dear supporter of Brazil. Zil, 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 Zil. Oh no! Who uh, who's responsible for letting her in here? Uh, I, I would like. Y'all won. We did not. And um, I just appreciate. I think it makes me appreciate even deeper the fact that. 
sports in these two countries can pull together and show how we can get along, how we can support each other in even differing sports and things like that. So I, I've, I've been excited to come here this since y'all announced it. But thank you for the, the perspective you gave on it and the hope <laughs> that we have. And kudos to you from Bangladesh because that's, a, that's an amazing country. Thank so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, while you're uh, about to ask the question, just just one quick note. Um, of course, the uh, the comment about Brazil is a joke because of Argentina and Brazil's soccer rivalry. That's from the beginning of time. But if you take a look at political relations, um, they're about as close as as humanly possible. In fact, the largest source of tourism in Brazil is from Argentinians. The largest source of tourism in Argentina is from Brazilians. Just to give you an idea. Hi. Um No, not at all. Uh, and in fact, that was our first meeting. Um, was just uh, my question to Nazmush was, just tell me about your country. What's going on? N yeah. Well, not, not even just what's going on, but just tell me anything uh, about your country, the the culture, the people, um, and you know, if you wanna. Yeah. Uh, so. Like, I have just suddenly got a call from Pri, like from OIP, and she was just asking me to assist uh, Professor Robert. And I was really surprised that and was really happy also because it's uh, about my country, it's for my country. So, see, Bangladesh is a very small country. There are very few people here who actually know about us. So, in fact, any people just ask me from where are you from, if I tell them uh, I'm from Bangladesh, there are very few people who recognize us. So I felt so good that, okay, in this way, I can just, you know, represent or can, can tell something about my history, about my country. So uh, uh, then I met Professor Robert and then we discussed, we both shared our opinions and the like history pattern about that, how this uh, love uh, increased for Argentina. I have just shared all of the things to Professor Robert. Yeah. I think it's such a rich, a rich example of something interested you and like you went down this rabbit hole, right? Yes. And all of a sudden there was this really rich example of interdisciplinarity and how that can happen. So anyway, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, um, by the way, it's not just for this presentation here. Um, we're planning on actually uh, submitting a research paper to a journal and presenting this at an academic conference. Dr. Rodriguez? So yes, sir. I want your unbiased opinion. <laughs> Who's going to win the, the World Cup in 2026? <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> You want a you want an unbiased opinion from an Argentinian? Uh, like that's uh, that's impossible. Um, uh, all I can say is that it will not be Brazil. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. But uh, incidentally, the World Cup in 2026 will be held here, literally here. Uh, Dallas is one of the venues. Uh, maybe even for the semifinal or final. And um, it coincides, of course, with uh, uh, also our, our national anniversary as well of um, 1776 to 2026. So I have a question for Bangladesh. Why out of all the players, so like my generation idolizes LeBron or, I mean, I'm a Cowboys fan, fortunately, so Joe Aikman. Um, but why Messi out of all players? Does that make sense? Okay, it's not for a specific player. It's for Argentina. But like previously, everyone was crazy, crazy for Maradona, right? Because Maradona was also crazy at that time. So this time also, uh, people uh, from Bangladesh love Martinez, also the goalkeeper. So. 
the fact is Messi is the captain of the team and Messi is not only popular in Bangladesh like everyone considered him as an idol right so that's why everyone is praising about him but it's not only about Messi it's about full Argentina team like Martinez also have so many uh, fans in Bangladesh um, and just to point something out uh, since you made a, a football American football reference as well um, the uh, Super Bowl that just concluded was watched by about 114 million people. Um, the World Cup was watched by 4 billion, with a B. Um, so just to get an idea of globally speaking, not in the United States, of course, but globally speaking, um, Messi is known everywhere on Earth because everywhere on Earth they play soccer. Even the Penguins in Antarctica play soccer. But um, but, but football or basketball or other sports are far more limited in terms of, especially American football, outside of the United States. There's a few countries um, that play, but, but soccer is universal. And so globally, though in the United States it's not the same, globally uh, Messi's a far larger than life figure than, um, than most American athletes would ever, would ever dream of being. Thank you both so very much, and uh, thank you to the nursing building for accommodating us and allowing us to use this space for our Lions Lecture presentation tonight. Y'all please join me in giving one last thank you to our presenters. So this will conclude our Lions Lecture for the evening. Uh, we hope that you enjoy the presentation and that our, our, you are looking forward now to our next presentation next Thursday, and we will have one more in April as well. Um, Thursday will feature Dr. Emily Newman and Dr. Kent Montgomery, um, and please do not forget to take your commemorative glass before you leave, and we appreciate your time tonight. Hope you have a great rest of your week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.